Hello everybody, Paul here from Fiesta Adventures and uh, today I am going to take you to the racetrack in Death Valley. Now the racetrack is a place where rocks mysteriously move along the playa of the dry lake bed and uh, it was actually a mystery for a long time because uh, nobody had ever seen it and they weren't quite sure how it actually happens but um, more on that later. To get to the racetrack, it's a 27 mile drive on a washboardy, rough dirt road. Um, it's kind of slow going. You actually don't need a four wheel drive vehicle, maybe a vehicle with uh, average to above average clearance. Um, and you got to take it slow. But right now, I find myself at a place called Tea Kettle Junction. This is at mile 20 on the road <clears throat> and uh, on the road to the racetrack. And uh, this is a place where people leave these uh, tea kettles here. And it's been a tradition for a very long time. And there's different theories on how it got started. One was they thought maybe there was a spring or some water available nearby. And it was to let people know where the water was. But it looks pretty bone dry around here to me. Anyway, I'm going to uh, walk around here a little bit and show you this thing from, from different sides. It's kind of crazy. People also leave like uh, little notes and write things on the tea kettles and the date that they were here and you can probably hear them clanking in the wind a little bit. It's kind of cold right now. Um, this is early March, but it's unseasonably cool. It's storming in other parts of California right now. And it, we might get a few sprinkles here in Death Valley, but i um, not sure about that. Anyway, gonna move on here from Tea Kettle Junction and uh, see if we can get to the racetrack in one piece. Over and out. As we get close to the racetrack, we see it from a distance, and it's. Uh, I'll say that the, the the distances are really distorted out here. You you look look at it, and it doesn't look that far, and then it's pretty far to get there. And once you walk around on the racetrack, it's also uh, kind of interesting. So come on along for the ride, and uh, we're gonna check it out. We're also gonna take a hike up to Ubihibi Peak so that we can look down from above on the racetrack and that'll be a fun view. All right, everybody, here I am at the racetrack. I have arrived, I'm out on the playa. It's super windy, so I've got my back to the wind. Hopefully my little mic with my little dead cat on it will keep the audio pretty good. Um, so behind me is the uh, this is what's called the grandstand, and this is kind of out in the middle of the playa, which is kind of oval shaped. I guess that's why they call it a racetrack. I'm going to turn around and give you a kind of a 360, probably get some wood noise as I face the wind, but you'll get the idea. It's absolutely beautiful out here, and we've got a great sky today with the clouds and whatnot. So, and the surface of the playa is pretty amazing to look at. It's really quite a pattern. Um, unfortunately, you can see some tire tracks here and there where some jackasses decided to drive on it, which is really stupid, but that's what people do. So anyway, um, I'm going to probably climb up on the grandstand, get a view from above. OK, so uh, now I've climbed up on the grandstand. So this is the view from the grandstand of the playa that's looking south. And if I swing around this way, you can see to the north, you can see the gra grandstand's more kind of toward the north end of the playa. It's not in the middle, but whatever. And you can see uh, where some geniuses were driving around down there on the racetrack, which is strictly forbidden, but you know, people gotta do what they gotta do. It's not too bad, I guess. Anyway, this is pretty cool being up on the grandstand. And there's the, uh, the other kind of end of the grandstand. All right, so here I am at the uh, south end of the playa, and that's where the rocks tend to move. And right here, this little guy right here, it's about the size of a softball. You can see it's moved, I don't know, you know, 30 feet or so. It's got the track behind it. Now, when I first read about this, they, they said it was like this big mystery, like nobody would ever seen the rocks move and it was unexplainable. And, you know, my thought was, well, you know, the playa gets wet and then it gets muddy and super slick and then high winds come along and it blow the rocks and that's that. Um, it's definitely not downhill. The north end, I think, is two inches higher than the south end. So it's really like 
almost perfectly flat. But anyway, um, nobody had ever seen them move. And then finally, a number of years ago, somebody actually saw the rocks move and they reported it and they came out and they studied it some more. And evidently, the muddiness is not enough for it to, and the wind is not enough for it to cause the rocks to move. They're just too heavy. And there's one more element that's required. And as it turns out, that element would be ice. So what happens is the playa gets wet and muddy, it freezes at night, and then in the morning the sun comes out and the playa, kind of the mud on the playa melts, so it becomes super slick. But there's a layer of ice underneath the rock still because it's, you know, it's in shadow and the rock has some thermal mass or whatever. So now that rock is sitting on a piece of ice and then it doesn't even take that much wind for the rock to start moving. And I guess they move pretty slowly, but um, they do move. So it's pretty cool to see. Now, honestly, I was expecting to see some much larger rocks. I've heard they've had some that are like hundreds of pounds. So um, I'm gonna look around some more and see if I can find uh, one of those to show you. But um, again, it's just, it's just amazing here. It's just beautiful. I'm gonna give you another uh, panorama here so you can check it out. Just amazing. And now you, there's the, and that's looking north. You can see the grandstand there behind me. Just super nice. All right. It's about midday now. I walked all the way across the playa to the other side. Now I'm walking back. And I just looked, I've already gone over five miles hiking. So it's pretty good. The wind is behind me, so I hope the audio is working with my little lapel mic. And um, anyway, if you look over there, um, that's the grandstand. In the distance, that's the thing I was planning on earlier. And what's interesting is that when you're walking across the playa, you feel like you're getting close to something and you're really not close at all because the distances are just like really distorted. So the grandstand, it looks like it's kind of close, but I know how big it is because I was just on it. And so from this distance, it's a lot farther than it looks. So anyway, so far this playa experience has been pretty great. I'm, I'm overwhelmed with the beauty and the clouds and the, just the general scenery. Um, but as far as the, the rocks on the racetrack, pictures I've seen were with much larger rocks with much deeper tracks so maybe it just kind of you know kind of you know it's probably it, it varies every year I'm sure depends on when the rain comes when the freeze comes and when the wind comes so you know it's probably different every year and I think you do have people coming and taking some of the rocks as souvenirs which is too bad. If they've got tracks behind them, it'd be really nice if everybody just left them so that all of us could enjoy them. Anyway, this is pretty awesome. Highly recommended. And uh, time to head back to the van, have some lunch, and then see what the afternoon brings. Out.